Hello there, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Whoever's here live or if you're watching me after the fact, I appreciate it very much. Hey, Danny, how you doing? We are live. Uh, apologies for the confusion. If anyone's coming over here from YouTube, I was just trying to stream there, which I thought made more sense for the purpose of this stream, but YouTube's back end is being a little bit weird with me, so I figured why not just leave it on Twitch, which is now what I'm used to. It's funny. I used to be trying to stream using YouTube's back end because it had a couple different features that I liked, but because most of my viewer base was there. And now, <laughs> it's like I'm way more comfortable on Twitch. Funny how that goes, I guess. Uh, let me know how the levels are going. I can hear Nerevar Ryzen blasting. This is actually, if you guys are curious, this is my favorite song that has ever uh, been. Well, actually, this isn't even the reprise. But just, I mean, I guess I'm probably not alone in this and that the primary theme now for Elder Scrolls is my favorite. But this is the original version and it's still my favorite. It's the first one I ever heard when I played Morrowind back in the day. Back in the day, excuse me. So, thank you all for joining me. Thank you, RLD. Thank you, Atru. Thank you, Danny. So, I plan on doing these streams every Monday at 10 a.m. for Ultimate Skyrim. I guess they'll be on Twitch now. I haven't quite decided. Maybe if YouTube's back end is a little bit less weird, but why fix it if it ain't broken? Twitch, that is, not YouTube. Um, and what we're going to be doing today is a couple different things. We're going to be streaming for about two hours, like usual. Um, and basically, I'm just going through and doing shit that needs doing. The first thing that we're going to be doing... That's a little bit loud. Hold on a second. I'm going to turn down that music for both the stream... Let's put it like there-ish. I think that's fine. Um, we're going to be adding a couple mods today. And that is kind of unique in that there's really not that many more mods going into 4.0's public release. Um, there will be plenty of new mods going into subsequent versions, but 4.0 is almost completely done in terms of the mods that are going into it. The exception here is Cobb Encumbrance and Realistic Capacity, or perhaps better said, Realistic Capacity and Cobb Encumbrance. Maybe. That's what I'm doing right now is evaluating if these mods will work the way I anticipate. Basically, what I'm trying to do here is, first of all, uh, vastly reduce the player's carry weight. That's kind of priority number one, so that you can't carry just like a ton of stuff. Now that we have so many ways in the game for you to manage your carry weight in interesting ways, things like Imperial Mail and the new horse saddles and everything like that, um, I wanted to add that little extra level of immersion and that extra level of balance, actually, where you cannot just shove your character full of stuff. I wanted it to be fairly realistic. Realistic is a term that I use very loosely, obviously, in a fantasy universe like Skyrim. But something that didn't break your suspension of disbelief regarding what you could reasonably carry in the game. And so these two mods, I think, are really going to help with that. Realistic capacity, I'll walk you through the primary features as it comes out of the box. Um, with this mod, your character has a small base inventory space. Any equipped items will add on to the capacity and are essentially weightless. So that's a big one. That means that anything that you're wearing, meaning your armor and your weapons, I guess not weapons, um, but just ba excuse me, basically armor, is not going to weigh anything in terms of your inventory carry weight. It's actually going to allow you to carry more. I guess the rationale here is that your body is doing all of the carrying for your armor and such, and the armor includes... You know, little pockets here and there for you to be able to store stuff. This is irrespective of bandolier and all of the pockets and pouches that it adds, of course. Um, so wearing certain pieces of armor, cuirass gloves and boots will give you a slight increase to your carrying capacity. So, for example, you could keep a dagger in your boot. The base capacity and added capacity can be set in the MCM. You unequip or equip a piece of armor to redo the calculation. The mod keeps track of... This is where it gets really interesting. 
The mod keeps track of recently equipped weapons and also adds them onto your capacity. So you can carry one large weapon, like a great sword, a battle axe, a war hammer, and a staff, two medium weapons, sword, war axe, and mace, um, just any, you know, one handed, uh, two small weapons like daggers, one ranged weapon, as well as a shield without running out of any space. So any one of those things that I just listed, in the specific number that I listed, those will not add to your carrying capacity either. They kind of work in the same way as the armor in that it's just kind of on your person and you don't think about it. Um, any weapons that you carry additionally to those will take up your inventory space. Now that feature is a little tricky. Conceptually, I think it sounds really cool. I like the idea of having slotted weapons that just kind of don't take up inventory space at all, that you don't have to worry about. However, my concern is that in practice, it might be a little confusing and it might feel a little cumbersome, for lack of a better term, because I know that the way the mod tracks the weapons and stuff, thank you, Capel, for the follow. I know that the way the mod tracks your weapons, the ones that should be the ones affected by this no carry weight business that are slotted, we'll say, it's dependent on your last equipped weapon. So I imagine a scenario where you have to kind of equip and unequip weapons in a certain order in order to tell the mod which ones you want the zero carry weight feature to apply to. We'll see about that. So with that stuff, realistic capacity is more of a, a stretch goal. I think it sounds cool and I'm interested to see how it interacts with everything else we've got going here and with Cobb Encumbrance. But if either one of them will end up being cut, realistic capacity is more likely. I just thought it'd be fun to experiment with. And the second mod is Cobb Encumbrance. This one's a lot more basic and like anything that Cobb makes is just uh, wonderful. Um, that's David J. Cobb, I believe. is it? Yes, David J. Cobb. He's also the author behind... Cobb Positioner, which we use, and also many other mods. He's a really wonderful modder. Um, so Cobb Encumbrance is a lot simpler. Basically, it adds definable states for your carry weight and allows you to adjust several different things, attributes about your character for each of those carry weight states. It's kind of a complicated way of saying there are... It's like Dark Souls, or you can make it like Dark Souls, which is actually pretty close to what I plan on doing. Um, you say, hey, if I've got 0% of my carry weight filled up right now, then I can be this much faster. My health can regenerate this much faster. My stamina can regenerate this much faster. Or it could be less for whatever reason if you wanted to. Basically, you can create carry weight states and adjust your character's attributes while you are carrying that much. So you can say if you are over encumbered, you define what being over encumbered means. And you say when you are over encumbered, you are going to be this much slower your stamina is going to regenerate this this much slower just do that kind of stuff and what i thought would be really fun this is another kind of theory crafting idea that i have is to define carry weight states in a simple way very similar to dark souls because that is a, a feature that i think is really fun there just something that keeps you on your toes in terms of what you're carrying um in that game it's all about what you have equipped i figure in this game in skyrim and the bethesda games where Looting is the name of the whole game, right? It's what you spend a huge portion of your time doing, even if you're not dungeon delving. There's a lot of other ways to spend your time in Ultimate Skyrim besides just killing stuff and going down dungeons. But typically speaking, no matter what you're choosing to spend your time doing, it involves collecting stuff in some way, even if you're just homesteading out on the plains and making a farm or something. You're still collecting stuff. So I thought it would be really fun to allow players to kind of mess with their carry weight and incentivize them to have more or less stuff on them at any given time. For example, I wanted to make it so that if you are, the numbers I'll have to tweak a little bit, but let's say you only have 50% of your total carry weight on you, wouldn't it be cool if that made you a little bit lighter on your feet? Or if that made you regenerate stamina just a little bit ow, um, faster? Things like that that would make, make it so that you're not constantly just playing with that limit of your carry weight. Where it's like, okay, if I pick up this one gourd, I'm now slow as a camel, right? 
Versus, I don't know if camels are actually that slow. They seem slow. That's the only reason I use that example. The I, I don't like how the typical kind of carry weight and encumbrance system works in vanilla Skyrim. It's not terrible, but it's not that interesting. It's like, okay, well, I can carry... If my carry weight limit is 300 pounds, and I'm carrying 299 pounds of stuff, I'm, you know, super sprite, and I can run around and just, you know, move completely unhindered, and yet the second I pick up that additional pound and hit that 300 limit, I'm super slow, and, you know, I I, I can't move at all, and, and I'm, like, completely weighed down. That just feels kind of gamey to me, and I thought it would be more fun if we, like with anything else, added a little bit more depth to that system. So, I also thought it would be a fun opportunity to show you guys kind of my typical process for adding in mods. I've done this in previous dev streams before, but why not do it again? So, we got realistic capacity and cob encumbrance. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do, and this is useful, I suppose, for anyone if you're adding mods to your own mod list, or if you ever want to make something like Ultimate Skyrim, since as you guys now know, if you saw the last dev update, Automaton is completely free and completely open source, so anyone who wants to can create their own mod list and, you know, go about it however they please. You might find this useful. So the first thing I like to do is come through here and, well, you, okay. So you can see, what I was gonna do is come into the conflicts tab here. You can double click any mod in Mod Organizer. I'm assuming it works the same way in Mod Organizer 2. Atreus says, I like these things. Well, I'm glad, my friend. We'll see if it works out. This is what I have a tendency to do. The team will tell you all about this. I'll get so fanciful with these ideas of things that I want to put into the game. And obviously, the execution um, <laughs> sometimes allows it, sometimes does not. We do what we can. Um, this is why, oh my god, without getting too much into it, it's why the Skyrim modding community is just the... I, I, I haven't spent that much time modding for other games... But there's just nothing like the Skyrim modding community out there because chances are, if you've thought of something cool that you would like to add to your game, almost always there is a modder out there who has had the same thought and, if not implemented it completely themselves, started down that line. You know, it's it's really wonderful. So you can go and find something like Cobb and Cumberland and go, oh yeah, this is super awesome. Let's put that in there. Anyway, so any uh, mod that's in Mod Organizer, you can double click. And it'll give you all this information. You got any files that it contains, optional ESPs. Um, that I actually almost never use. I don't know what qualifies as an optional ESP. But the main things that are interesting to me in these tabs are any files is nice. Conflicts is hugely important. And the file tree. This is really nice if you want to be able to see at a glance exactly what a mod installs and where it goes in the virtual file system. But conflicts is a very important one. Realistic capacity and cob encumbrance are nice because they have no conflicts with any, any other mod, excuse me, and that's what we were here to evaluate, is to see exactly what these things are adding and whether or not they would cause problems with any other mods. This is the first area in which you need to be concerned about conflict resolution. Conflict resolution with actual plugins comes next, but you can have files that are not plugins conflicting with each other. And that's why you see these flags. Hey, Tricky Dragon, how you doing? Um, just to give you an example of a mod that does have conflicts, we can have Vivid Weathers here, which is only in the installation because Snowfall Weathers depends on it. But this is probably going to have a lot of conflicts. Uh, not that many. Um, not that many files, actually, I suppose. But so you can see here, everything in this panel means that these are files that Vivid Weathers is overwriting. So you have, you know, versions of Skyrim, Clouds, Map, and, and whatever. It's, these are textures that are present in the high-res uh, texture pack, the default one by Bethesda. And because they are in this panel, that means that Vivid Weathers is overwriting them. Down here, we've got this panel, which means that these files are being overwritten by other mods. In this case, Snowfall Weathers. So that's very useful if you're evaluating large mod lists. Um, but we don't have to worry about that right now because realistic capacity and cob encumbrance do not have any files that are being overwritten in that fashion. So the next thing we got to do is come up here. I'm going to take, typically when I'm evaluating these things, Bizgo, hello Belmont boy, first time catching a stream, fairly new to playing modded Skyrim, love Ultimate Skyrim though, apart from downloading all the mods. Fell in love with Skyrim again, thanks man. I'm very happy to be of service, my friend, and I know that the downloading all the mods, it can be cumbersome, 
that's it's got to be a pun in there for cop encumbrance but it's what makes the whole thing possible and it's what allows us to do something like this because that way all permissions are respected and also i mean mod authors want people to come by to their description pages it can be a very important part of the process too because there's oftentimes a lot of useful information in there that bears reading uh realistic capacity cob encumbrance so typically when i am kind of first testing out a mod i'll just throw the plugins in right above ultimate skyrim just to see you know it's you i can put them somewhere else later but for now that'll be fine Streaming on Twitch, not YouTube. Yes, ST, sorry. YouTube was giving me some weird problems, and I just decided to go back over to Twitch. Unfortunately, I tweeted about it. Um, I know not everyone reads the tweets, so hopefully um, people will figure out that I'm over here on Twitch at the moment. But if not, I'll have to make some sort of announcement. Oh, well. So, I'm going to do that. How long have I been streaming for? Only about 15 minutes, I'd say, because I was doing 15 minutes on YouTube, and then it was giving me some weird... It was like my the quality of the stream kept getting super variable, and it was telling me that my resolution wasn't optimal, and the analytics were felt like it was like inaccurate. So I'm just over here on Twitch, which is honestly where I'm used to streaming now, and probably makes more sense to do it there. And the only reason I wanted to do it on YouTube is because most of my viewer base is there anyway. Um, but I don't know. I figure... Yeah, and that was the other thing. Someone messaged me saying that... Because I was streaming. Someone messaged me saying that... Uh, asking me if I was streaming. And I told them yes. And they were saying that they couldn't find the stream anywhere on YouTube. And so I checked my own like channel. I didn't see it there. I don't know exactly where it's supposed to show up. I figured as maybe like a notification for people on YouTube, but it's a, a little confusing. Um, YouTube as a platform, without getting too into it at the moment, it's a very confused platform at the moment. Um, they're trying to do a lot of different things, so I get that it can be tough and confusing, but... An advantage that a platform like Twitch has, for example, is that when you go on Twitch, you know exactly what you're going to get. You're going to go on someone's Twitch's channel, Twitch channel, rather, and they're going to be streaming. You know exactly how to interact with the stream. It's always the exact same thing every single time. It's like on YouTube, even as a creator, maybe I would know this if I streamed more often on YouTube, but it's like I start streaming. I don't know where that's going to show up. I don't know if it's going to show it to the people who are there on YouTube who would be interested in watching. I feel like a lot of the time um, videos that I upload are not shown to my subscribers anyway or they have to click an additional notification icon in order to make sure they get every notification. It's just you never... And it's not even like I don't understand why some of those features exist. Like if someone's subscribing to 200 and 80 channels, right? If every time one of those channels uploaded a video, that person got a, no a notification, they might end up with like a shit ton, which can be a problem from a user experience perspective. But I don't know if, I don't know what the solution is. I just know that it doesn't work super well when people don't get notifications for everything that they're subscribed to. And I don't know. That's like why I say it's a, a confused platform at the moment. Anyway, what we're gonna do here is take a quick look through realist capacity and cob encumbrance just to make sure that their um, records are not conflicting with anything. And I very strongly suspect they will not be. Let's see, I forgot it was supposed to be YouTube in the first place, so I just came here without checking. Oh, there you go. See, that's another thing is if I try and swap platforms, it causes confusion. One thing with YouTube streaming that's really cool is that you can watch back while the stream is live. Wish Twitch would have that can watch back while the stream is live what do you mean by that as in you can go further back in the stream can you not do that on twitch watch back while the stream is live huh well i imagine that if anything if youtube does something better than twitch does uh you can you can't rewind on twitch huh i swear that i do that sometimes but i don't watch that many twitch streams so you guys are probably right anyway um the so what I'm doing here is just a quick evaluation of whether or not any of these records in either one of these two plugins conflict with anything. 
and they do not. This is kind of what I assumed would be the case. They are entirely proprietary plugins. You can watch streams back, but not while they're live. That's super weird. Huh, did not know that. So looking at this, just as a point of reference here, I'll do like a comparison here, Requiem. Let's just open up. Um, leveled NPC, no, non-player character, actor. So these are records that comparatively um, conflict with a bunch of stuff. So these are, you can see these ones, if it's, I, I won't bother to get into what all the different colors mean, but um, this is what I'm looking for when I first open up a plugin. It's just a really basic evaluation. You just run through it super fast to see whether or not anything conflicts. And if it does, it's fine if it does, depending. You just have to know what each record is doing and what to look out for. So it is also interesting to see how each mod functions underneath the hood. It can be very useful information in case you have to make changes or have to adjust something to work with the installation at large. So you can see here, um, I'm guessing that a lot of what realistic capacity does is through scripts, which I am less talented at evaluating, I will admit. Um, but I mean, there. If you know basic coding, that's it's like a papyrus script engine, so you can look at the scripts and you can see how things are done. Um, but this stuff is mostly going to be handled by uh, scripts. See, I haven't crashed once in my 20 hours of gameplay on your 3.4 build. That's awesome, St. That's actually surprising to me. Um, I do take pride in the stability of the installation, but typically speaking, it is modded Skyrim, and there's at least one or two in that amount of hours. I'm going to use that as a testimonial. <laughs> Say, hey, look, this guy hasn't crashed at all. I do secretly love when... You know, I get all kinds of feedback on Ultimate Skyrim all the time. Some positive, some negative. All of it's useful, depending... Well, most of it's useful, we'll say. Um, when it comes to positive feedback, secretly... I've said this before. One of my favorite things to hear is when people have a stable experience. Um, hearing that they have an awesome gameplay experience and that the game is transformed for them and, and so on and so forth is really fun. But when people say that their game has been stable and doesn't crash, that is secretly one of my favorite things to hear because I think it's hard to do with modded Skyrim. Really with any modded game or even with base Skyrim sometimes. But uh, yeah, for that reason, it's very... I, it makes me very happy to hear. I'm glad that's been your experience. All right, so this is all fine, and what we're going to do now is pop in. We're going to hop in game, and we're going to see. It. So what that also means is that once we are done kind of evaluating everything in game and we decide, hey, we're actually going to put these mods in the, the full installation, um, we can put these wherever we want. This is why it's important to evaluate the conflicts and stuff, because um, you will have to put them or you should put them in a very particular spot in the load order depending on what the conflicts are. And these are my favorite kind of plugins because they're easy to implement. You can stick them wherever you want and it shouldn't really matter because they don't conflict with anything. Um, it's real nice in that way. So what we're gonna do, we'll go to our rectificator. See, it feels and plays like a 2018 game. That's awesome. I'm really glad you feel that way, ST. Danny says, hey BB, just wanted to report a bug I found. The Balmora blue item from a Thieves Guild mission is worth 13.6 million gold. Might want to take a look at that when you have time. My god. Balmora blue item from a Thieves Guild mission. Interesting. Well, I'll take a look at it, Danny. Never heard of that item off the top of my head. Also, oh my god. This room. Oh, hold on, let me turn this down a little bit. How's the, the music volume for you guys? Not too loud? The item is 000 DC 172 Interesting. Okay, well, we'll take a look. I was going to say, um, yesterday, uh, we visited my, my parents, or my dad and my stepmom. They live in Ventura, and we went to a really amazing Thai food restaurant. Probably the best Thai food that I've ever had in my entire life. Um... But let's just say that today, this morning, I am paying the price for that significantly. And I don't think any of you guys would want to be in this room here with me. I might have to uh, pause this stream at some point to take care of some business, if you know what I'm saying. Um, but I'll let you know if that's the case. Say, hey, Smokey Bear, how you doing? Um, you can get rich with the Thieves Guild. Yeah, apparently, if you got a 13.6 million gold item. However, you are going to have a really hard time um, finding 
a merchant who can get you anywhere close to that amount of gold. Although you could get a lot of gold with just that one item. Why don't we do this real fast, Danny? Um, just for the sake of consistency, we can look at that really fast in TS Edit. And go right here. Um, actually, what I'm going to do here is hold Shift when clicking OK. This is a little fun fact for you guys. If you hold Shift when you click OK, it's going to load up all your data. Oh my god, I'm going to have to pause this soon or else I'm going to explode. Um, if you hold Shift and you click OK, it'll load up your entire load order. That's It's done because it skips reference data. Now, a lot of the time, that reference data can be very useful. But if you're just checking something really quick, like a single record, then a lot of the time, you don't need it. All right, so let's see. Food, drug, Balmora Blue. Oh, it's Skuma. Okay. Well, it's got a bunch of effects. And what is the value listed as? Let me see here. Values listed as 67, but I bet you I know what's happening right here. All right, I'm actually, I'm seriously going to have to pause this stream just very briefly. If you guys will excuse me for just a moment, I will be back ASAP. Okay, say much better now. I don't know if you guys can tell, I don't know how good my camera quality is, but I'm sitting here for like the past 20 minutes just like sweating profusely. So we are all good. Um, thank you for sticking around if you're still there in the chat. So Danny, you in particular, if you are here in the chat still as well, what I would imagine, oh, yep, so here's probably what's happening, is you have... Some of these effects, you know, Requiem, Damage, Health, I can't remember what adjusted this uh, Skuma before, this Balmora Blue. Um, something adjusted it, but I cannot remember, because you can see there's a lot of, you know, uh, effects here that are not in the vanilla record that don't seem to have a um, an origin point, which means it's one of the plugins that's sitting at the bottom. Um, Let's see, here's a screenshot, by the way. Let me see, Balmora Blue. I believe it. Yeah, and see, and it's got a million different effects, or it's like, it's, because of all these effects, I can see the text is super, super uh, squished. Thank you, RLD, for the follow. Is Skuma addictive in Requiem? Not really, ST. That's an area that I would really like to expand into, is just the, uh, 
illicit substances element of Skyrim. There are obviously a few things like skooma and moon sugar and even some varieties of skooma, which is what you've got here. And they're not really that interesting. There are a few recipes now between uh, Requiem and even some of the mods and some of my own that use moon sugar and that use skooma in fairly interesting ways. But the only thing that's interesting about them is that they the items themselves are useful and will make you want to collect skooma and moon sugar and whatever. But there's no real addiction gameplay like there is with Fallout and things like that. Um, let's just say it's not nearly as interesting as I think it could be, and that is an area that I would very much like to expand upon in future versions. I've always thrown it away when I got it. I wouldn't throw it away, depending on what kind of character you have going. Um, but anyway, so we've got a couple different problems here. Um, now you can see here that this Balmora Blue is intended to really kind of for 120 seconds at least it's going to fortify your one-handed your two-handed um by a huge amount 50 points each 15 for unarmed so that's pretty significant um but the problem here is that with all these effects you have um as you saw danny not only is the the value insane but also you can't read what it does now the value part is easy to fix I'll show you how to do that right now. In fact, we can even just do it as a, a stop gap. It goes 67. Now, effect data, the value, that's fine. Um, what we're going to want to do here is go to flags, and we're going to edit the flags. And all you got to do is click this, no auto calc. So typically speaking, with ingestibles, things like potions and food, um, and maybe some other stuff, uh, at least weapons, anything that gets enchantments applied to it or effects like this, um, the game has an option to, it's really nice that it allows you this, it has an option for you to auto-calculate the value of that item. So let's say if you've got an iron dagger that is normally worth 100 gold, and you throw a cool fire enchantment on that dagger, the you don't have to manually set the enchantment, or like the, the value of the new item. You can set the value of the enchantment for the enchantment data, but if you have that auto-calc just not unflagged like this the game will automatically make that item more valuable based on the several different variables actually it'll be based on the base value of the enchantment itself on the magnitude on the duration so it's a really nice way to kind of not have to do that really tedious shit yourself um, and i remember i learned about that very early on when i first started modding because i spent like three hours manually <laughs> gearing out enchanted items like these, the value of these enchanted items I wanted to specify and then I went in game and they were all wrong I was going what the hell and then I realized that they were being auto calculated anyway and that I just basically just wasted three hours doing something that the game was already going to do that's why it matters if you test first always test first to see how things work so you have a baseline to evaluate from that's what I mean, though. I get so excited about ideas, and I just start implementing them. That's not good practice. I'm better about it now. Anyway, so that'll fix the, the auto-calculation problem. Now it's not going to be nearly as valuable. It'll be 67, probably. Um, but that does not fix the problem. Hey, Rune, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. For anyone who doesn't know, Rune Wolf is a member of the Ultimate Skyrim team. I'd say your official title would be like, Discord server administ administrator slash father. He's the one who birthed all of our features on Discord, as well as the courier. Also streams himself. Skyrim streamer, actually. Um, and other stuff. You've been streaming, what, um, uh, all kinds of development, I think, Rune, lately? All kinds of stuff. But anyway, so the rest of this... Ooh, what are you? Spiritedness. Okay, that's fine. Now, to fix... This is a problem that I've been having with several different um, items. Is that if there are too many effects, then the what it'll do is it'll automatically aggregate all the different effect descriptions. So, if you go in here, you know, fortify one-handed, it'll have a text description that says, I don't know, you know, one-handed weapons do the magnitude percent more damage for duration seconds. So it'll auto-populate auto that, excuse me, 
Um, it'll have the same line for two-handed. It'll have the same line for unarmed, for this and that and that. So in this, if you guys are checking out this image that Danny linked, you can see here, I'm looking at it right now. In fact, here, let me open it in another tab and I'll throw it up into the stream. Um, oh, excuse me. Open image and new tab. Here we go. So you can see here, this is a nightmare down here. So we got a value of 1,363,000. No, sorry, 13,639,039. And you've got, if you look down, it's really tiny. It's even tinier for you guys. But you can see one-handed weapons do 50% more damage, which is also a crazy value. Um, Two-handed weapons do blah, 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 blah. And all the negative effects are down there as well and so you just end up with this shitty little text block that no one can read and it just looks all crappy um so there's a couple different ways to fix that um none of them are perfect but for what we're gonna do right now we're just gonna go ahead and let's see here oh i don't have the reference data damn it um this is another area in which reference data would be useful i was gonna click through the the skooma effect that's down here assuming that that is also applied to default skooma well here why don't we just do this what i'm going to do is just drag over the standard effects so that you know that's it's just exactly what it was supposed to be in vanilla relatively uninteresting at the moment but that's fine that means we can also remove the auto calc no auto calc flag because no, there's no longer all those effects that are messing with it um but here's what i'm going to do just for funsies, I'm gonna go into Requiem here. So I don't have my reference data. Go Requiem, and we're gonna go, what is that? Ingestible, we we'll sort by name, so we can go down to Skooma. Skooma, at least we can create parity with standard Skooma. Oh, okay, well, so that, that is standard Skooma's effect then. That's where that came from, and that's why it was there. It must have been a patch from one of the trader's patches. Well, shit. I guess every bottle... Oh, and now that you mention it, I think every bottle of skooma does have that description problem in the game. Well, here's what we're going to do then. We're going to take this bad boy, and we're going to take the one that we just edited. We're going to create parody. P-A-R-I-T-Y, not P-A-R-O-D-Y. Go skooma. Um, oh, no, it's blue Balmora. That's right. Up here. We're going to create parody with those two records and just kind of worry about it later. Um, yeah, a few items in the game do have that problem. Any item that has too many um, effect descriptions is going to experience that problem, notably the Archmage's robes and skooma. Um, so that's definitely something that's in my list to fix. There's a couple different ways, like I said, you can fix that. The problem is exacerbated at least a little bit by the Centaur font, I believe, that we use from main font replacement. Um, but one day soon, it's tricky because it's not a tremendously high priority fix, but it's something I would like to fix, and I'll fix it. ASAP. Now, back to the core of what we're doing here. Let's see. Oh, look, we can copy over our proper uh, keywords, too. We should get rid of... We don't want it to be sellable to anyone who will buy food. Um, in case you guys don't know about this situation, um, comparing records is, oh my god, one of the most useful things in the world if you are messing with large load orders. Um, just to give you a quick example of what that is. So, in this is an Ultimate Skyrim... Dot ESP. Well, I'm going to save the changes here. Um, so what do we have? Several different uh, food items, right? So these are all... You can only compare records of the same type. So that means, you know, you have to compare ingestibles with ingestibles. You can't compare ingestibles with an activator, for example. But we just selected these four records, right? You right-click, you hit compare selected. You now have all four records laid out right next to each other from whatever plugin you source them from. That's important. Um, so right now we are seeing the four because normally if you click this right I'm seeing Ultimate Skyrim ESP data. That's the record I selected, but I can also see the data from other plugins that contain Data for that record so I can see you know the editor ID from Requiem I can see everything from the original record which is Hearthfires when you are comparing these four 
it's important because it's not going to tell you anywhere on here. It's important to remember that it's being sourced from Ultimate Skyrim ESP. So that is the data you are seeing here, just for the sake of reference. But you, so you can do that. You can see what all of these you know, records have in them. You can see their effects. Everything, all the data they contain, you can compare right next to each other, which is really, really useful for a number of different reasons. Let's say you want to, you know, like what well, we got sound data here. Um, you can adjust the, so you can see these ones, food, drink, wine, Alto have, oh, actually, oh no. I was going to say, this is the sound data. These are the sounds that it will make when you are picking an item up or putting it down. So you can see that the wine um, records have the same sound as like potions. So anything, it's just like a glass bottle with liquid sound in it. Um, if you wanted to, let's say that, you know, you had another record that you want to use the same sounds, you can just compare them like this and then just drag it on over. Hold on, I'm going to give you guys an example here, but so I don't ruin it. Let's just do it this way. It's like, oh, bam. So now that same exact sound is dragged over to apple dumpling or whatever, right? You can do that for any of the data that you see there. It's extremely useful. And you can also do shit like a, let's say you have like a ton of records that you're trying to apply like the same effect to. Like this is something I've had to do a lot lately with the crafting overhaul is take like for a bunch of breakdown recipes, right? I had to add in new conditions for the recipes to show up, but it's the same condition that I want to apply to like a million different records. You can just, there's ways to automate that with Mater's automation tools, which is also really wonderful at scripts. Hey, Garrick, how you doing? Hey, Harmony, thanks for joining us. But if you want to be a little bit more specific, most of what I do is kind of hand done because I'm not fantastic with the automation tools. And also I like to individually verify that exactly what I want happening is what's happening with these records. Um, call me kind of a stickler for that reason, but I find that it just saves me trouble. I find that if I, I'm really careful with it the first time around, it cuts down on the amount of time that I have to revisit records that there's mistakes on. Anyway, um, I, let's say I want to apply this single effect to all these different records. You can just compare them all just like this. You come in here and you go copy to selected records. Bam, boom. It's going to give all of those records whatever it is that you're copying just super easily like that. You can do the same thing with remove from selected records, although that one's a little trickier because let's say I went here and Garrick says, is the stream on already? That's what we're doing here, Garrick. Hopefully you can see it. Um, if I were to go here and do, let's see, copy. Oh, it actually won't even give me a, a thing. Oh, it has to be here, effect. So if I went removed from selected records, right, on this effect line, um, you might assume that that means it's going to remove any instance of Requiem effect alcohol from these records, but it actually will not. It is just going to remove everything that is on this line of effects. So that can be useful too, but if you're just trying to remove a singular effect, you'll end up accidentally removing, you know, food, restore health, or whatever. Um, so be careful. Once again, all things that I've learned the hard way, but Unfortunately, that's how it goes with a lot of these things. And if only, God, I don't know how the hell you'd ever implement it, but imagine if one day TES5 edit or the X edit software had an undo option. Like, oh my God, that would save me so much trouble. Um, it, it doesn't currently because I think that would be like super, super hard to do. I don't even know how you would create an undo function, but it would be tough, we'll say. All right, so that's all of that. Now let's get back to the primary thing that we're doing here, which is testing out realistic capacity and cob encumbrance. We got our nice rectified load order. We're gonna fire that bad boy up and let it run. Let it run, baby. I'm kind of running out of water here. Very thirsty this morning. This song is definitely Morrowind. Let's see if I can place it. Sometimes I'm pretty good about that. I need to hear it more. Maybe it's over. Oh well. It could have been. I can never remember. This one's over the next hill, I want to say, which means the last one was probably Silt Sunrise. So, yep, this is over the next hill. I'm not 100% confident about Silt Sunrise, but actually, fun fact. Silt Sunrise is now in Skyrim, if you have the Dragonborn DLC. 
because you go back to Solstheim. That's actually one of the best songs, I think, for, of the entire Morrowind soundtrack. It might be my favorite, second to Nerevar Rising. And the reprise, actually. That's the Nerevar Rising reprise, I don't believe is ever actually used in the game. It might have been an exclusive for the soundtrack. But it's basically just a super badass version of Nerevar Rising, which is the primary theme for Morrowind, and whose motifs are now kind of the primary theme for the Elder Scrolls at large for Skyrim and for Oblivion. Um, so if you are interested in that music, definitely check out Nerevar Rising Reprise on YouTube because it is a really cool take on that song. It is very epic. The island of Solstheim is located to the northeast of Skyrim. The northern maiden out of Windhelm is known to occasionally take passengers back and forth. How about that? His sword seemed to be a part of him, a tail coming from his arms to match the one behind him. Dope. I used to have an app that had all of the books from all the different Elder Scrolls games. Should get that app again. I always thought that the Black Sacrament sounded super edgelord and dumb. Send your child unto me, for the sins of the unworthy must be baptized in blood and fear. It sounds like a 16-year-old wrote it in like their death note notebook that they bought from Hot Topic. Welcome to Ultimate Skyrim. Please wait while your mods initialize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know how that works. If any of you guys have not seen the new starting mechanics, here's your chance to see it. As T, they did. This is all thanks to Skyrim Unbound. For those of you who don't know. It's really wonderful. You can customize every element of your start. And really, in some ways, you customize your entire game. You can make your character not Dragonborn, which I think is really fucking cool. It's something that I always kind of envied from people who didn't use Live Another Life, but used other alternate start mods like Skyrim Unbound, because I was just so tied to Live Another Life for so long. But I do think that's really cool. I think that there is... I think the, the longevity of Skyrim at this point, like in 2018, um, largely exists in systemic gameplay, um, in expanding the depth of all of the systems so as to make the game interesting without relying on narrative elements, because the, the narrative elements in Skyrim are not its strongest point to begin with, but especially not after seven years of playing the game. Most people know the quest lines front to back at this point, and they know kind of all the different major story events that are going to happen. So the real entertainment, I think, comes from building out what happens between those points, right? Like, for me, the primary draw of Ultimate Skyrim is definitely... I mean, the, the quest lines have been improved, um, so that if you decide to do them, it's as rewarding of an experience as it can be. But I think, the, at least to me, what is way more interesting is everything you do between narrative quest lines. So, you know, coming up with your own goals and following through on those and having those pay out in interesting ways. Being like, oh, I want to build a, a farm, you know, like in the mountains. So, oh, I need to get these materials to do that. It's so like, oh, where do I get those materials? Like, oh, I could get this material from like over there, but then I'll have to, you know, cross this territory and that's a problem for this reason so maybe I'll do it this way like that to me is is way more interesting than any of the quest lines themselves Relly says hi BB I imagine how busy you are with the work in US but is there any chance of a pre season 2 US series I already finished the first twice maybe Relly the problem is and this is I'm actually kind of chilling back on I w I've been doing a lot of streams lately and they are really fun and I know that there is a core contingent of my viewers who really enjoy them and, and I really love interacting with all those viewers too. I've just found that even doing that has made it tough to develop at the pace that I'm comfortable with and so for now what I'd really like to do is focus on development, focus on well, first of all organizing my development is something I'm in the process of doing with my fiance because she is a really excellent uh, professional consultant 
and she sees how difficult it is to organize these projects. So I'm trying to do that to improve the pace of development. Um, and also I would like to improve that pace by just kind of chilling out on the video production content for now. And ST, thank you so much for the donation. I really appreciate it. Um, just focusing like on development primarily. All right, now I see that donation and I'm wondering why it's not showing up in my little box here. That is, hold on a second. Let me see if I can fix that because I want your, your name to be plastered right across the thing. Uh, Garrick says, yeah, if you want to role play properly, you have to imagine a lot of stuff and cheat around what happens a lot. Um, well, it shouldn't be too much, hopefully, Garrick. Um, if everything's set up properly, that is the goal. I mean, it's modded Skyrim, so there's always something a little bit weird. Oh, Streamlabs. This is what I'm looking for. Because that stuff is super weird, I found. Let me see. Um, yeah. Maybe it'll show up. Well, let's give it a quick second before I restart the session because it's weird. Um, anyway, let me go into my mod configuration. Where's my mouse? There's my mouse. Uh, come on, baby. Skyrim does not like when I alt tab. You guys are probably well aware of that. That's the problem with, I don't know if actually Special Edition has that same problem. I've not really messed with it all that much. That's what you get for all this time. You get to watch your sexy face, no homo. I appreciate it, ST. I really do. Oh, what happened? Okay. Come on. Come on, baby. I know you can do it. Ah! What has happened here? Usually it doesn't have this much trouble. Come on. Okay. Has it straight up crashed on me or frozen? Oh, nope, there it goes. I was gonna say, very rarely does it actually do that. There we are. Felix, what'd you do? It does not like being alt-tabbed, but it's much better about that now. Man, I remember back in the day, it's like you would sneeze at Skyrim the wrong way, and it would crash, or it would freeze, or it would just do some sort of annoying nonsense. Alright, so I'm looking at real, or Cobb Encumbrance, that's our first one, enable this mod, enable notifications, and my god, do I love mods that add in an MCM menu with an option like this, because I know that a lot of people are not I like I have a very particular vision for how I want Ultimate Skyrim to play, right? It's the version of Skyrim that I would want to play myself. Um and I think that a lot of the time I ask players to just kind of trust that the experience if they just kind of lean into it as I presented it will be enjoyable, but a lot of the time that's just simply not the case. There are people who do not like certain aspects, things like weather survivalism and stuff like that like it's something that for me i couldn't play without weather survivalism stuff like frostfall and campfire um because to me it's just super weird to be in the game and not have that stuff but there are people who just simply don't feel that way for people for whom um it's the opposite for them having that stuff in the game or stuff like it is super annoying to them and really impacts their experience negatively and in those cases i don't like to tell the players like no like you absolutely have to play it my way i do it enough just but because of how many mods are required and there's no other way to get around it that's why i love when you have these mcms that just say hey with this you can enable or disable the mod it's not always easy to do that the way that a lot of these these mods are structured adding that option is not an easy thing and the fact that modders go through the trouble of doing that is just so mwah, amazing Let's see here. Um, who wants to have a donation war? I, I cannot officially endorse that. Uh, I remember if I click my mouse button on a load screen, my Skyrim would crash. You'd have to alt tab again, and click something weird on Steam alt tab. That's ex so you guys remember. It's exactly what I'm talking about. See, Range says I'm all over the place. I'm realistic, immersive, but also not super lore friendly. And see, like for me, I refuse to put anything in the game that is not like reasonably lore friendly with select exceptions when I can make like a written justification for it but I try really hard to like maintain the lore and I know that there's a lot of people who just don't even give a shit you know like don't even care about it at all 
Um, I got lots of side immersive things, but also not very lore strict. I find that buying a horse early helps survival. I have lore intensive. I love Skyrim's lore. I also love the lore myself, which is why I try to kind of keep it intact. Felix, you are correct that buying a horse early helps survival. That's going to be much harder to do in Requiem 4.0. If it's cool, I add it to an extent. I mean, dude, you can do whatever you want with your own installation. It's the beauty of Skyrim as a single-player game. Um, it's just, you know, it's like you can add whatever you like. Anyway, all right, enable this mod, enable notifications. If enabled, inventory status messages will appear in first person. Um, if disabled, you will see the percentage of your carry capacity that is in use and the percentage by which your speed is being changed. Um, well, we'll leave that on. Immersive messages. Okay, so I think that enable notifications it, I'm getting the same I'm guessing this is what that description is supposed to appear for so we'll turn that on for now we'll go settings let's see encumbrance stages so here you go this is where the the magic happens oh and they even have what is this FISS presets so stage zero when immersive messages are enabled the stage displays my packs so light I barely even know it's there oh, okay is that the kind of immersive messages we're gonna get because if so I might edit them to be a little bit more simple, we'll say. Um, this is a, There's a lot of uh, loading screens and text and copy in Requiem, for example, um, that is cute in a way, but that I would like to change at some point in the future. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, the original author of Requiem was a... Um, I think German was his first language. And let's just say that he speaks... English far better than I speak German and I even took German in high school so that's saying something um, but it's I mean English is really hard right so you have these like there's a lot of copy in Requiem that is like super flowery and like super purple prose and super passive voice and I'm just really like a weird stickler for that stuff uh, so one day I'm just gonna sit down I did this for a lot of loading screens and for a lot of the perk descriptions already perk descriptions because I actually consider them very important to gameplay but one day I'm just gonna sit down and I have like a list of all the copy that I want to write and just rewrite it all it's tough to find the time to do that because it's such a low priority change but it matters to me and one day I'm telling you I'm gonna do it I try and break things as early as I can but I still love the hard early levels I'll lose my blessing I wish skills in Requiem would show exact values but I know how hard that is with how complex Requiem is um, it depends on what you mean by showing exact values, as he. It is pretty tough, and there is like a. <laughs> excuse me, I need to go get more water. My throat's pretty dry. There is a degree of mystery that um, I think is fun to have in there. I think that a lot of the copy is written so that it is too mysterious, and so you actually don't even know what the perks you're getting do. This is a common criticism of Requiem, um, and is relatively minor in the grand scheme of things. The problem is that you. Especially in Ultimate Skyrim, the pace of leveling can be so slow and perk points are so important that asking players to invest in a perk without telling them exactly what it does can create some frustrating scenarios. If you invest in a perk thinking it's going to do one thing and it doesn't do that thing or it does something totally different, um, it, it's not fun because then you either have to load back an old save, uh, which is really not that big of a deal, but it's kind of interrupts the flow a little bit or you don't like let's say that you just you think it's doing what you thought it was going to do and you go you know hours later only to discover that it doesn't do what you thought it did it's like well fuck you just lost hours of gameplay there speaking of perk descriptions there's a missing word for the fortified muscles perk in the alchemy tree if you didn't already know the word heart is missing i did not know that daniel i'll have to take a look at it yeah it's hard to to build out of those mistakes early without console commands I agree, Felix. It's, I mean, there's concessions to be made everywhere, but I agree with you. Um, let's see. Thank you, Justin, for the follow. I appreciate it. When your character's at this encumbrance stage, they will move X percent faster. So this is what I'm talking about, right? Um, weight percentage zero, speed modifier. Um, stamina recharge. So let's see. Oh, look, it automatically, I'm guessing it procedurally assigns this too. Um, buff, nerf. So you can see here we have up to eight stages, up to nine stages even, of encumbrance. 
um, crush stage. When the player reaches this encumbrance stage, they will be slowly crushed to death under the weight of their gear. They can survive if they drop enough items. That is a lot. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Now, what I would like is I'm going to try and keep things very simple. Hey, Zachary, how you doing? I agree that it's cool. I'm going to try and keep things simple. I would like to start with four encumbrance stages. Um, having one be light, where you are not carrying that much, and you get a bonus to movement speed and to stamina regen. Um, the medium stage, which is probably kind of... I don't know if I'm going to make them all the exact same. Um, the medium stage is like, you know, no... Uh, debuff or buff to anything it's just kind of your standard baseline um, a stage in which you are carrying a lot of stuff um, and you are a little bit slower as a result and then a fourth stage which is we can call over encumbered um, so we'll see hey BB I have a strange bug with e and B and ultimate Skyrim where if these two settings aren't on false and zero my nighttime is just a black screen Enable false time of day and detector level night. Um, I would question because that's definitely I would not mess with those settings. St. Um, it's probably something to do either with the installation of your ENB or if you don't have one tweak installed and your settings for brightness in your actual display settings can be really low. Sometimes it can cause that kind of stuff. Um, but either way, that definitely should not be the case. And I would bet money that it's more an ENB installation thing. If you want, you can try either updating the binaries or moving to Snowfall ENB because that's what the new version will use. If you're using the old ENB, uh, Real Vision, which is now Revenant ENB, um, we practically, the only support you're going to get for using that ENB is from other users. I mean, it's been over a year since I used that ENB myself, so if there's something different there in newer versions, um, I unfortunately... Like, it's literally just a black screen. I can't even see a light source one foot in front of me. Yeah, that... It could be any number of things. Oh, Bizgo had the same bug. So, I don't know. I'm assuming you guys are using Revenant. Um, I would post on, either on the Discord or the subreddit about it. Or switch to Snowfall. That's what I would do. Um, okay. So, let's configure these bad boys. Stage 0. Buff empty. So, this is when you have... Nothing at all. When you're not... So speed modifier, 20% is a huge speed modifier. Stamina, recharge modifier. Let's make that like even like 10% because that's a huge, huge buff to stamina. So this is if you are straight up naked, right? Then you move 20% faster. And I'll have, so I guess it's five stages in that regard. All right, so stage one buff enabled. If you are at weight percentage, let's go... 25. Let's try and divide it into fourths evenly at first. Weight percentage 25 or less. Your speed modifier will be 10% improved. Bam. Um, hmm. Let me think about this here. Stamina recharge modifier. We'll say... 5% because that's a huge huge buff um, but who's ever going to be at less than 25% of their carry weight is another thing um, well maybe because if you do the realistic carry weight all right so let's try weight percentage this one will be if you have 50 see I almost kind of want to make it go 50 then 75 or maybe just thirds would make more sense Hmm. Let's see. I miss the encumbrance mechanics of 3.5 D&D. Not familiar. ST, thank you so much for the other donation. I don't know why it's not showing up in the fucking thing. Let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to... Okay. I'm going to alt-tab. And see. I'm going to restart session. Stream labels has given me all kinds of problems. Um, I don't know if it's because I have it set up incorrectly. Um, it should be set up correctly. I don't know. In fact, here. Give me two seconds. I'm going to check something on the streaming computer. Let's see. Daily. I don't know what happens if I do this. Session top donator. And that should be it. 
I don't know why it doesn't show up. So we saw the donation pop up, if that's what you mean. I can see that, Zachary. I'm talking about the little labels down at the bottom where it's supposed to show, like, today's, you know, top donator. Or most recent whatever. It's like it doesn't update. It doesn't show it. Or the most recent one should be there. Because Ace Fury, that donation was a long time ago. Let's see. Browse, most recent donator. That is not the thing well I don't know unfortunately I'll have to get it sorted out at a different time um, I'll see it's been giving me so much trouble and I don't know why but I'll find out I'm gonna go install snowfall and keep your soothing voice in the background you're too kind my friend I'm blushing I don't know if you guys can tell god I need a haircut I actually have a haircut uh, appointment today I'm getting into a, a mop also these glasses, I highly recommend for any of you guys. I picked these up over the weekend, and they are so much better than just not having them. These are like $10 glasses you can get on Amazon that have yellow light filters. So you look like Bono, first of all, which may be a plus or a minus for you guys out there. Um, but it uh, filters out blue light from monitors. So if you're like me and you spend all day looking at a monitor it's much better for your eyes because a lot of the time I find that by the time I end my work day blood vessels on both sides of my iris like completely burst which I don't think is good I don't think that's super healthy um oh come on Skyrim you have to do this song and dance again there's also a setting in Windows oh yeah what sort of setting I wonder come on baby you can do it Does that include TVs, my PCs, on my 60-inch? Probably, Felix. I mean, most electronics, I think, output blue light far more than any other light color. Okay. Thanks, Skyrim. Come on. You got it. Oh, this is from Oblivion. This is, um, I don't remember the name of this track. Something cool. Oblivion has all the best, super easy listening, beautiful tracks. It's called nighttime mode. Oh. Eliminates blue light in settings display. How about that? Well, I don't want to affect the coloration, though, of the monitors, which is, like, a big thing for me. Um, I imagine if you eliminate the blue light at the source, it might do that a little bit. Okay, let's see here. If I'm doing... Let's create, like, a little curve. Let me get my pen out here. And... So we can have carry weight states. I feel like if there is like a carry weight state for 0 to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, and 75 to 100, obviously that's a little bit more gradual. Um, but it seems a little overcomplicated because then you also have one for over 100%. So now you got six whole states in there, which like I said, seems like an overcomplication of something that's supposed to be a relatively simple mechanic. Um, so let's see, 0, 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, you got 75 to 100, and, well, no, and then 100 plus, so that's 5, that's not so bad, um, like I said, it might be, like, alternatively, you go 0 to 33%, roughly, and you go 33 to 66, and then you go 66 to 100. Um, then it's divided into thirds, and then you got over 100. Um, huh. Let's see. I mean, wearing the glasses effectively does the same thing, does it not? Everything looks orange tinted. Sort of. I, I feel like these ones are actually pretty decent to where they... I mean, there's a slight orange tinge for sure, but it's really not a whole lot. Um, less than I thought it was going to be. Let's see here. Yeah, it makes it orange. Uh, the fact that once you get too much, you start to die with this will help me RP a lot. I always felt bad for carrying like 500% my carry weight to a town to sell. See, that's what I'm talking about, Zachary, with this idea of... Um, eliminating metagaming I talk to people about this a lot is uh I think a lot of the time when I talk about instituting mechanics 
that prevent metagaming. Um, some people will tell me that they believe something like that should fall under the player's purview to manage, right? Like their own personal role play, we'll say. And I do get that argument. I get that, uh, you know, because it's a single player RPG, if you just institute some self control for whatever mechanic you want, um, you can make the gameplay exactly as you want it to just through that self control alone. What I think, though, is that as someone who's trying to design an experience, I vastly prefer if players don't have to make that choice themselves because I think the temptation is too great to exploit mechanics to do things as efficiently as possible. So, for example, if you can carry 500% of your carry weight, if you can do that, I think it's rough expecting players not to do that. I think that there is... Like, I've read a book. I read a game design book one time, or an excerpt from a game design book, more accurately, talking about that exact thing, um, this principle, and I can't remember what it was called offhand, but it's like this principle that if you, there is an identifiable hyper efficient way to do something in a game players will do it like 100% of the time or if not 100% of the time enough to where if you can kind of stop up that gap and prevent that exploit it's probably worth doing because players just player psychology if you're presented with a much much better option for doing whatever it is you're trying to do They'll pick that, and they'll pick it even when they're not having fun doing that just because it's available. And it's like, well, if it's there, how can I not do it? You know. And I get that psychology because that's kind of how I am, and that's why I've spent so much time trying to stop up all these metagame gaps is because knowing that it's possible, even if I don't do it myself, knowing that it's possible impacts my enjoyment, I feel like. Um, should I go into the 4.0 beta section and download the custom EMB files? I'm playing 3.4. That would be... Yeah, I would, ST. Um, they have a couple tweaks in them that improve the performance. I've been using the program F.Lux for a while to reduce eye strain as well. I'll check that out for sure. Like 90% of the reason I love Ultimate Skyrim is all the metagame prevention in it. Well, I'm glad that other people agree with me. Well, that's not supposed to be a link. <laughs> really? It's funny how Twitch does that. I'm really bad at controlling myself with that stuff, even though I want to. Um, was it you that changed the ebony dagger to an expensive note? I thought that was funny. No, that was Minor Arcana. That was Exonus. Um, I think he agrees. And there's a limit, of course. Some people, even how they define meta gaming, differs. Um, and what sort of things should be left in versus what should be uh, eliminated obviously varies. But all I do is just kind of do my own personal take. And anyone can tweak it. How they see. All right. Well, so why don't we try if we did this zero to 25, 25 to 50, because I like those flat numbers. I feel like people know those numbers. And if you think about like Dark Souls, for example, most people know that if you're over like 50 or 75 or whatever it is, then you start fat rolling. Right. Um, there's a Machiavellian sort of thought. That's like if all the elements are in place, there's no reason for that domino not to fall. He didn't write that. I'm just paraphrasing, paraphrasing, paraphrasing. Um, I can understand the parallel to the whole metagaming idea Felix and it's kind of what I mean it's like I don't know why not if you can just fix it so that players don't have to make that choice because to me it's like what is more immersion breaking than asking the player to recognize a limit within the game world that I like identifies it as a game identifies the experience as a game and then asking them not to break that limit even though they can i can't imagine like a more I, I, this kind of like a strange concept to elucidate but it to me it's like oh man if you identify that like a uh that an exploit exists in order for an exploit to exist you have to be playing a simulated experience right like an exploit doesn't exist in real life like i can't just walk over here to my shelf and orient it the right way and create a duplication glitch for a book that I have. So if I recognize that in this simulated experience, I can do that, asking me not to do that, but leaving the exploit in to me is just a constant little reminder in the back of your head that what you're playing is a simulated game experience. And obviously there's no way to eliminate that completely. 
um, even in a game that's not seven years old. But I think it's still worth trying so that you are not reminded. Um, player will always try to make a powerful, efficient character. It's up to the designers to make it so that nothing is OP. That's generally my feeling as well, Garrick. And like I said, there is a limit. Um, depending on how you define metagaming, even if you... Like, okay, a good example is Stardew Valley, right? A game that I think is wonderfully designed, that I had a ton of fun with, that I think is so emblematic of a an experience where every mechanic was very carefully considered so as to not break the balance um, and to, you know, encourage interesting player choice. Even in a game like that, I think you reach a, a, an apex point where when you understand the game systems well enough and when you know all the different options that are out there because of the experience that you have, there is still going to be a most likely going to be a, a root of maximum efficiency. Um, there's always going to be some sort of, you know, cost evaluation that is going to be far ahead or hopefully not far ahead, but it's going to be ahead of all the other choices that you could make. So I don't know if it's possible to eliminate completely, but even if you accept that, it's like, okay, well, let's at least make it interesting by making it hard to constantly hit that whatever like that efficiency route is or just making it interesting in some ways I don't know it, it's a very tricky tricky thing to balance balance is hard just you can summarize it that way uh, that's one of the reasons I like how Requiem disables fast travel when I rarely play vanilla I always wind up fast traveling at some point despite it not being particularly fun I agree with you uh, CME I don't know how to pronounce your name totally Kamikau <laughs> um it's tricky too, where I like I've been playing Fallout New Vegas, right? And I've been fast traveling around in that game because I found that between the fast traveling, um, or if I didn't fast travel, nothing would really happen um, in between the the areas that I would fast travel. There's a few encounters here and there, and sometimes something interesting happens, but most of the encounters kind of end up very samey. Um, and in that case, not fast traveling is also boring so there's your your thing it's like okay well if i'm gonna have players not fast travel which automatically kind of builds out the the uh, continuity of the world in my opinion and makes it feel like a, a realer place and like you know it adds weight to like where you are in the world because you figure if i have a quest at this end of the world and there's something i want to do over here i think it's fun to try and figure out how you're going to get to point a from point b and make it more a more involved process than just clicking the fast travel option. But I think if you're going to require that and you're going to disable fast travel, you also have to make it interesting to get from point A to point B. And this is where it can be tougher. It's like, how do you do that? Um, I feel like this whole maximized efficiency gaming wasn't a thing back in the day. Kind of missed the days of no one knowing what the fuck they were doing. Well, I can, I mean, Zachary, if you look back, any game that has systems there's someone out there who knew enough about the systems to exploit it and to find that maximum efficiency route. I would say that it became easier over time to tell everyone that information because you know the advent of the information age and the internet has made it much easier to spread information than it has been previously. So it's like, you know, when I was a kid, I remember being in fourth grade and uh, the only way to exploit the games that we were playing was to purchase like a cheat code book from Barnes and Noble, right? And that was how you found out about the cool stuff. Or maybe if your parents let you use their computer long enough for you to find a web page somewhere that has some sort of secret trick, you learned about it that way. It's like now if I get a new game, you know, or I get I'm like playing Path of Exile, let's say, and I start up and I realize that there's a whole system for upgrading your character through all these different routes, I can just go, you know, best which build and then hit enter and I have a bunch of things right there um, telling me exactly what I need to do um, it is easier that way so I don't know um, I guess it's, I mean every, everything changes over time challenges for designers become different um, you look at old games and you look at it this way right so many old role playing games that are just so beloved by so many people are rife with major major balance issues that if you know about them they can straight up ruin the experience for a lot of people once you know about it um and you can kind of reason that those balance concerns were not as much of a concern in the past 
because people didn't know about it as easily. You couldn't just trade that information as readily as you can now. But so it begs the question, like, are those games worse because they didn't have that same scrutiny and those balance concerns exist? Or were they better because no one knew about it anyway and so everyone still kind of had that magical, mysterious first-time experience playing through? I don't know. That's what I mean. I feel like it's always been a thing. It's just a... I don't know, man. Well, I've been talking about nothing for too long here. I want to actually get some some thing done. I like learning landmarks. I started in a witch's coven once. I came back 30 levels later and was like, hey, I camped here. That's what I mean. I love that shit, Felix. Absolutely love it. Um, starting Dawn Guard was a problem with fast travel without fast travel and enabling vampire raids. Yeah, that would be. What's up? Oh, excuse me. You should use the... Um, you can use fast travel in the game. You just got to pay for it. You do it by night. And you do it that way. Um, and also, fun fact, the all the fast travel options are going to be a little bit more resource intensive in 4.0. So, you know, taking a carriage is not just going to be a simple 100 gold. Um, I haven't figured out the exact balance of it yet because what I'm doing here with this whole weight percentage stuff is really going to impact that gold economy. It's kind of a nice, simple way to address a lot of balance concerns with a solution that I feel kind of elegantly um, tackles all of it in a way. So we'll see. But it will cost you more than it does now. I think it's safe to assume. Okay. Well, if we... Let's say a naked person from... Okay. Oh, shit, actually. So it is six. Six states. So you got zero. You're not carrying anything at all. And then 0 to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, 75 to 100, and then over 100. Hmm. That just feels too micromanaging to me. Or I guess maybe it's not that bad if the players are just kind of naturally, you know, uh, dealing with that as they pick stuff up. But if you're going to ask players to unload inventory in order to achieve a certain, you know, threshold... Hmm. Well, if you make it... That's actually an interesting idea. If the... If you make there be enough stages to where you can actually approximate kind of a, a curve as opposed to just binary states like this, or let's say we can you can curve the curve a little bit more, then you might actually discourage the meta game and you can just say something like, the more you carry the more weighed down you'll be, the less you carry, the faster you'll be, and the, uh, you know, the better your stamina regen will be. That actually almost sounds better to me because then you're not telling players to... One of the things that I don't necessarily like is the the meta gaming that, um, like, the, the carry weight states in Dark Souls do. It. Like, how many times have you sat there in the menu and been like, okay... If I, if I equip this uh, armor and then that armor, that gets me... Now I'm at 49.9%, so I'm technically under the 50% like cutoff. And like now I can not have the fat roll. That feels very gamey to me. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll look at this a different way and we'll just try and make it more of a gradual curve. Um, yes, that would be awesome, BB. More stages equals no meta gaming on weight. That's kind of my thinking here, Garrick. Haven't updated yet, but I found trade gems to gold to merchant items was effective. I'm excited for the guild notes. I am too, Felix. And I think that that's still fine. Um, and Requiem 2.0 includes a lot more gems. So, you know, gems to gold, you can still manage the weight and that stuff. Um, but what I'm thinking about doing um, is uh, removing the banking service from Imperial Mail, just because I don't find it that interesting to be able to just dump all your gold and be able to get it from everywhere. It's like, why even have it then? Why even have the gold weight? Um, or, alternatively, you restrict the banking to like a, like one or two locations. I also think it's really weird that, you know, you can have a... It's like, I'm going out to Winterhold, right? And I talk to the Winterhold in proprietor, and it's like this little backwoods town, and they don't do shit. They're lucky if they get a, you know, a courier by every month, let's say. Um, and that's reasonable to assume that they would someone make the trip out there maybe if they're protected 
Um, but they have what an entire <laughs> like stockpile of gold that they can just lend you. You know, so you can do like your banking service, and they can reconcile their records with the rest of the bank. Um, and no one robs the the town, so that's why I wanted to change that up. Um, I okay, if you can do a gradual curve with only nine stages, though. Well, you can do you can make it as gradual as you can within those limits, which is more than I immediately assume. That's like it was in Morrowind. Carry weight affects movement speed. Something similar in US would be awesome. Well, so that's what we have here. Garrick says nine stages could be 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120 percent, something like that. Start to crush you. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, go stage zero, buff, empty. So this is if you have absolutely zero. Let me take my notes here. So we got, if we try to do it by 10, it would be, so you got zero, and then you got 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 30 to 40, or sorry, no, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 50 to 60, 70 to 80, nope, I'm fucking that up hard, why is this so difficult for me to do correctly? <laughs> 40 to 50, 50 to 60, 70, 70 to 80, 90, 90 to 100, and then 100 plus. So that's already what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's a lot. Um, mine stage could be 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120%. It's very gradual. Um, I'm thinking. Okay, let's mess with this in here. Let's say you go zero weight percentage 20. If you did 15 percentages of 15. Well, let's try at 10 first. So weight percentage go 10 and stage two go 20. Thank you, Sopal, for the subscribe. Let's see, 20. Make this one 30. And make this one 40. I'm just going to see where this lands us. You know, 50. Uh, 50. How much? Oh, we got 20 minutes left, just so you guys are aware. Just so I don't pull the rug out from underneath you. 60, you know, 70, and that only leaves me at, what, 80? Was that the last one? Huh. I'll need to go to my establishments for my cut from now on. BB, what's the command to reset Skyrim's weather? That is FW, and then a space, and then 81A ST. Uh, Felix says, so I'll need to go to my establishments for my cut from now on. I'm not 100% sure what you mean by that, Felix. Um, if you're talking about that stuff that I was talking about for the gold, um, basically what I'm planning, right now as it is with Imperial Mail, um, any location that offers the mail services, so can send shipments or receive shipments, oh, I own businesses. Um, are you talking about with Landlord? Because if so, Landlord has already been cut um, for a couple different problems, unfortunately, that don't look like they're going to be fixed and would be a little bit too much trouble. Um, ST, I installed Snowfall and it's beautiful, but my FPS is crying. You should be getting relatively similar performance, ST. You can try turning off a couple of things like a, uh, um, ambient occlusion, and you can mess with it a little bit more. So, Felix, Landlord is... That'll be... Landlord, if you're still using it, functions exactly as it always has. Um, but it's not actually in 4.0, so it, we're not planning around it in any way. Okay, crush stage. Weight percentage. Um, hmm. I have to plan around this. This is tricky. 20 to 40, 50. What if I just did by 15? You go 0, 
then zero to 15. See where that lands me at, because at least that's something that makes the whole curve, instead of having kind of weird gaps. I'm trying to avoid having some stages cover a larger percentage than others, but that might not be possible. We will see at this moment. Love this song. 92. Is that 105? How many have we got to play with? Stage 0 has to be empty. Empty. And then what? 105. 120. Okay, we got. Match this up here. Empty. We got. Here we go. Eight. Oh, that actually might work. Oh, shit. And then 120 plus could be your crush stage. Huh. I actually like that quite a lot. So how about this, guys? What if we did... So zero, you're wearing absolutely nothing at all. You are just... You're naked and you are quick as hell. Um, and you regenerate stamina probably a little bit faster at least um, and then it just goes on a curve and it's a linear curve that is um, well the linear we can decide whether or not the the speed multipliers and the stamina multiplier if they exist at all would be even on the curve or whether what that curve would look like but the stages could be linear and that you just go every 15% is a different um, uh, setting and kind of goes that way because that way the whole thing is just just nice and easy and very gradual and doesn't contain any gaps where one stage covers more percentage than the other ones we could try it at the very least let's do this so zero stage one whoops Sixty. Oh, I know. Fuck that up. This one's supposed to be sixty. And this way, you can just say, generally speaking, the more you carry, the harder it will be for you to move, and the less you carry, the easier it'll be. And then, seventy-five, ninety. You ninety. What is it to? Did I miss one in there? 90 to 105. Noops. No, that makes sense. And then 105 to 120. And if you are, let's see, 121, I guess we'd put this at. Anything above 120, you are now carrying so much that you are crushing yourself to death <laughs> you can't move at all I like the idea of that okay now we figure out what's the baseline hmm <sighs> let's see this might make dual cast alteration mages a bit overpowered though why because they get armor um, without carry weight it's possible Then they also can't carry that much either. Because that's the whole thing, right? Is that in order to carry stuff, um, you need to be wearing equipment as well. You can carry like bandoliers and shit, but then, you know, that'll affect your, your carry weight as well. Hmm. This is tricky. Let's see. This should be a buff now if we find a curve. Stage four, theoretically, should be the baseline. I would say. But if, so what, 60% is your 
Maybe stage five. And then you start to slow down. But I don't know. Stage four makes more sense to me. Let's see. Speed modifier. Let's make that zero. Wait a second. Do these have to be buffs or nerfs? Settings. Because that changes things, potentially. Presets, save your settings, encumbrance, encumbrance stages. Buff, empty, one, two. So this only... It seems, okay, what? See, insane carry weight provided by muscles will make mages a lot more mobile, so it will become mandatory. Provided by muscles will make mages a lot more mobile, it will become mandatory. I'm confused a little bit by what you're you're saying here, Garrick. I'm looking at this. Also, we got about 10 minutes left, boys and girls. Thank you guys for joining me, by the way. It's a lot of fun getting to chat with you about this stuff. Um, and talk shop. I don't get to talk shop that much. Yes, Requiem Fortify Muscles is a spell. But I'm curious as to what we're saying here will be the impact. Honestly, my conception excuse me, of mage balance is not the best. Dual cast muscles gives a lot of carry weight. Ah, so you're saying that because of these percentage options, um, dual casting fortify muscles is going to suddenly make mages a lot more mobile and they'll have access to kind of some of these buffs um, in a way that non-mages will not. Is that the idea? Because if so, we can probably find a fix for that. It's not so bad, but it'll have to be considered. Let's see here. Well, shit. Okay. Alright. I got you, Garrick. I'm gonna make a note about that. All right. So this is kind of concerning me here. Um, it seems like these stages, I thought that they would be just kind of determined as buffs or nerfs depending on what settings I applied. But rather than that, it seems as though the... Like, only these stages are buffs, like have to be buffs, and these stages have to be nerfs. Oh yeah, and I got... So that is baked in. Okay, that actually changes things a little bit as well. The weight of my pack is really slowing me down. Ah, uh, see, I don't know if I like that. Um, crush stage. Presets, load presets, save your settings. Huh. Like running faster than an archer. Okay, well, I'm going to come back to that. Let's take a look at realistic carry weight here. Or realistic capacity. Um, there we go, toggle messages. Time it took to calculate your capacity and the base capacity is set to 25, curious capacity percentage, gauntlets capacity percentage. Huh. And you can see, alright, well this one's fairly simple. Boots capacity base. Interesting. I keep imagining the greased up deaf guy for the first buff with greased up deaf guy ability. But that's what I'm saying. If you were a greased up guy, you wouldn't necessarily have to be deaf. But you're absolutely naked. You're all greased up. You'd be moving pretty quick. It's a lot faster than some sort of adventurer trying to come after you in like a full set of armor. The dual cast muscles situation is pretty funny. I imagine so. But it's also, here's the thing is that dual cast muscles, excuse me, having a certain. Um, improvement to your carry weight and having that confer some sort of speed bonus or whatever um, that could as long as it's not crazy overpowered and we'd have to be very careful with that to make sure that it's not because um, Skyrim's AI is not exactly the best it could kind of create a fun synergy you know like that's not always a bad thing 
um, what we could potentially, there's a couple different ways to balance that. We can make it so that Fortify Muscles costs a lot more. We can make it so that the effect is lessened, or we can make it so that it does something entirely different if we want to eliminate it completely. Um, I'll have to look at that. But really what i got to look at now is how each of these stages is calculated or determined for Cobb Encumbrance. Because if these stages are locked in, the only buff stages there is are, rather, um, are these. And if it's too difficult to change that, and I, I might not want to go in and break the mod so that these are also buffs, um, or maybe up to here, then I can either change the curve or we can change how the mod functions so that other stages can be buffs and or nerfs. But that's something I'm going to have to check on the back end, and it'll be a fairly involved, fairly uninteresting task, I would say. That's also something I'm going to have to focus on. I find that the, the streams that we do here are a lot better for me in terms of getting to interact with you guys about Ultimate Skyrim. I find that my ability to actually work and focus on what I'm doing is not so fantastic over the course of the streams. Satter! How you doing, my friend? Just came to lurk in here. Got some shit to do. Good to see you. I hate to break it to you, my friend. I'm about to end the stream in a couple minutes. Um, but it'll be on Twitch. Um, I, sub I think they're immediately on the VOD, right? So you can watch it there. Uh, but I appreciate you stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Um, after this, I have to eat some lunch. And then I gotta get a haircut. And then um, I have to reply. Well, I don't have to do anything. But uh, I want to reply to all the messages that I've received over the weekend. This is typically what I spend my Mondays doing. Um, as I do like this little morning stream. Now these are going to be Skyrim streams. And then I eat. And then I go through all of my comments and questions and stuff to reply to. You know, if I have the time. Sometimes, sometimes the volume's high. Sometimes it's low. Um, I... I'm now at the behest of my fiance, and I think this is a really good idea. Um, I have an, a set amount of time that's allocated for that stuff. So if I can get to all of it, um, I can. If not, I can't. But I try to selectively answer the, the most important questions or if people are experiencing technical difficulties or require support of some kind, I try and offer it as best I can. Otherwise, I just spend all day long chatting with people and replying to comments, and I never get anything done at all. Um, my organization skills are not fantastic, as you guys might have been able to infer by now. I'm just thinking about this. Oh, here. At the very least, I can exit out. Um, I'll make it like a little save. Write her. And I can exit out here. And I can see, this will be the last thing that I do on the stream. Why don't we fire up TS5 edit and see excuse me, if these stages are defined in the plugin or defined in the script. Bring this load order up real quick. Felix says, keep up the good work, BB. Glad to catch a Skyrim stream even though you aren't productive. It's awesome talking shop. Thank you very much, Felix. And I agree with you completely. One of the things I would like to do after 4.0 releases um, I probably will not be able to do a ton. I'll be doing Ultimate Skyrim Season 2, right? And that takes up some time. In addition to that, I have a lot of plans for supplementary scripted content to uh, help teach new players mechanics that are present in Ultimate Skyrim. Um, so I think those will be a lot of fun. But in addition to that, I would like to do um, development tutorials or just stuff like conflict resolution just stuff like what we have to do in order to get this massive mod list running i think a lot of people are interested in getting their own mod lists running and you know tailored and bug free so if i can i would like to make videos covering that stuff and those might be well suited for streams maybe those will be scripted too um but i could always just you know kind of sprinkle in like Q&A dev stream so if people have specific questions that they want to ask me then I can answer them to the best of my ability or point them in a direction of another modder who might be able to help them with what they're asking about. Uh, like Gopher, yes that would be a good uh, comparison. Gopher's development and modding guides were a strong inspiration for me even when I 
was putting together the first video tutorials for installing Ultimate Skyrim uh, back in version 1.0. Just seeing how he presented things and how he showed them, and my god, I could just listen to that Manchester accent forever. Um, but he was a strong inspiration, so I'm kind of trying to, to do my own things in a similar vein. Alright, let's take a look here. Realistic capacity. Global. Um, global capacity base. No, I want Cobb Encumbrance, not realistic capacity. For my D list. One list empty. Interesting keyword. Speed stamina. And I have my reference data. Um, these are messages. So yeah, you can go in there and change the messages if you want. That's very easy to do. Um, uh, here we go. Okay. Okay. Well, these are just the names of the effects. Misc item, see quest, Cobb Encumbrance quest. Um, Cobb Encumbrance stamina nerf. So we got spells here. All right, all right, here we go. However, okay, I'm thinking that actually I will be able to change this to whatever I want it to be without having to mess with the scripts. Because you could just change that. Let's say you have spell stage six, right? It's un encumbrance. Um, if you just swap this out for the other effect that it uses, instead of speed penalty, you use, what is this, speed boost, then I'm guessing that those MCM settings will change out, or that will apply the, the speed boost instead of the speed penalty, but that will take some experimentation. And it could be that they're defined in the script. <gasps> Excuse me. So that doing that might not matter. Um, but I'll see. That'll be stuff I do on my own time. This is going to prove to be a, a little bit more complex of a task than I immediately assumed. I'm thinking I'm going to consult the team on this just to see what their opinions are in terms of balance and what they would find um, enjoyable or what they think are problems that we'll run into. It's always nice to bounce shit like this off of people. Thank you, 21 Salads, for the follow. Just because, like, stuff like, Garrick, what you said about the, um, the Fortify Muscles, right? That's not something I would have thought of off the top of my head just because of my less experience with playing as mages and as Alteration Mages in particular. Um, that's why it's really nice to be able to have people to consult with when you have ideas like this, because otherwise you run away with it. Or let's say that like there's something that we miss that is just just completely ruins the whole mechanic and completely undermines the whole initiative and makes it to where it's either you don't even want to bother to do it or there's a different way it has to be done entirely. Um, that might not be something that you'll recognize if you're just operating on your lonesome and you end up wasting a lot of time that way. So it's nice to have uh, people to talk with about it. Well, on that note, I'm going to have to call the stream right here. Um, thank you guys all so much for joining me. Um, we will be doing similar stuff next Monday at 10 a.m. Um, most of these seem to, like we said, turn into Q&A streams anyway, or just hanging out, talking shop about Ultimate Skyrim, which is a lot of fun for me. So I hope that you guys find it fun as well. Um, and also the stream VOD will be available on YouTube. Um, it should also be available on Twitch, so whichever platform you prefer watching on, you will be able to. Um, and thank you guys so much for stopping by. Thank you, Atru. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did, and I will see you in the next one.